Welcome to Micro, a podcast for short but powerful writing. I'm your host, Drew Hawkins. On translation, meanings, and nomenclature, this episode features a mix of poetry and prose that interrogates language as a tool, an identity, and a way of being. In our first piece, Finches and Sticky Notes shed light on a father's love for language and on the quality of his mind. It's called A Name for the Naming of Things. It was written by Ian O'Brien and published by TSS Publishing on August 27, 2020. Enjoy. A name for the naming of things. It started with signs that mum put around. Switch off, put back, lift. An unleaded sticker on the petrol flap. Hundreds it had cost, she said, to extract the diesel the last time. Slippers in the dishwasher, cigs in the fridge. He once knew the name for everything, it seemed. Could tell me a goldfinch from a siskin, from a song thrush. Tell a chestnut tree from a sycamore, a nimbus from a stratus cloud, Orion, Saturn, the North Star. He once told me the name for it. A name for the naming of things. Nomenclature, he said. I'd asked him why it mattered to know the names of wildflowers, the types of birds flitting above. Names are important, he'd said. You won't want to be known by something you're not. I took it into school, carried it with me all day long like a pet to show people. Nomenclature, I'd say. Do you know what that means? It's a name for the naming of nobody cares. No one likes a smart ass, my brother had said when I told him about how they'd laughed and what they'd said. Names. More stickers. More serious. Don't switch off. Do not open. Already taken today. He couldn't find a name for the place that we put him in. No name for the room or the chemical smell. No name for the way it made him feel when the photographs in frames became strangers. The last time I took him out, it was to the woods. And he asked me, what is your name? I told him. And a look passed over his face, a brief recognition, a flutter. In the trees above, a flash of yellow, like siskin like song thrush. Ian O'Brien writes and teaches in Manchester, UK. His novelette and flash, What the Fox Brings in His Jaw, will be out soon with Retreat West. You can find him on Twitter at OB1Ian. Our second piece investigates the challenge of translation between two languages as the speaker navigates the meaning of words. It's called Sounds Like. It was written by Jennifer Lang and published by The Gravity of the Thing in summer 2020. Enjoy. Sounds Like. I read one syllable at a time, first greater fashion, ga go a im, which makes me think of the game charades. Sounds like garinim, Hebrew for sunflower seeds, a common Israeli snack. Here in my favorite shabby chic Jaffa boutique called Sharon, some tongue twisting last name I can never remember where I fondle handmade journals and pads of paper, each inscribed with poetic words and biblical verses like Chalumot, dreams, and Veye Erev, Veye Boker, there was evening, there was morning. So with my American manners and accented Hebrew, I ask the sales clerk what the G word means, and she says, longings, sure of herself, her mastery of my tongue, 
when, as the locals say idiomatically, the asimon, the obsolete phone token, falls, and meaning and origin merge, as in, Kmo anit mitga gat alaych, I miss you, and she nods. Then I nod, pigeon chest puffing proud of myself, because this ancient abjad, 22 letters written only of consonants, acts like a woman in midlife. Warm and fuzzy on Wednesday, a hormonal mindfuck on Thursday, and today, a too-hot-for-my-taste Sunday in May, she's a tease. I know the infinitive lihit gagea, to miss, and how to conjugate it, and I understand the lexicon centers around a three-letter root from which nouns, adjectives, and verbs form, but sometimes two and two do not make four, and living in a foreign country forces me to be nimble-minded and connect dots between things like missing and longing. Deep sigh. I take a last look at the notebook and leave, hunger settling in for the night. Born in the San Francisco Bay Area, Jennifer Lang lives in Tel Aviv, where she runs Israel Writer's Studio, hunts for a special home for memoir and vignettes, teaches writing and yoga on Zoom in this fragile new world, plays with structure, and tests boundaries between prose and poetry, and occasionally awakens to Yes, We Love Your Work acceptances in literary journals like Ruminate, Consequence, and Stone Coast Review. You can find her on Twitter at Jen Lang Writes, or on her website at IsraelWriterStudio.com. In our final piece, the speaker oscillates between languages, her everyday routine belonging to both. We recommend that you view this one on the page as the poem's structure reflects its transitions. It's called, I am deciding which language to spend the night in. It was written by Akos Zimba and published by Wildness in their issue number 21. Enjoy. Deciding which language to spend the night in. I don't want to choose a mouth tonight. Sinise Yendesa. I won't rush. Undress first in Nyanja. Brush with English. Rinse in Nyanja and repeat again. Make my bed with English. Spread the sheets in Nyanja. Wear my mother's shirt again. I cannot leave her without taking something. I break the nyanja words my mother gives me. Keep to myself what I take from her. Sinise yendesa. I won't rush. I won't slip on all I know and misname everything. Akos Zimba is a Zambian Ghanaian poet and author of the newly released chapbook Born in a Second Language, published by Button Poetry. You can find her on Twitter at Akosua Za or on her website at akosuaza.com. Micro is edited and curated by Dylan Evers. Our social media is managed by fellow curator M.M. Kaufman, and the show is produced and hosted by me, Drew Hawkins. Our theme song is by Matt Ordez. You can find all the information about this episode's writers, their featured work, and the publications where they were published, as well as a transcription of this episode in the show notes. Find more of our shows wherever you listen to podcasts, check out our website at micropodcast.org, and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Podcast Micro. Thanks for listening. <laughs>